Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you my 10 favorite wood Christmas DIYs that I have created over the period of the time that I have a YouTube channel. I really hope you like them and let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I took a board that I already had in my garage and I'm going to um, mark three different uh, sizes. It's going to be 10 inches, 8 inches and uh, the 5 inches that's left over. And I'm going to cut that out with my miter saw. And this is how it looks like after I cut it. I also cut out 5 inches, two little pieces of wood that I, uh, looks like a painter sticks. And I'm going to send all of them. I will send edges and make sure they're nice and smooth. After that, I'm taking this Gorilla Wood Glue together with my uh, hot glue gun. And I will attach these together. And I'm just eyeballing it to make sure the top uh, goes somewhere in the middle of the bottom wood piece. Then I'm going to leave this to dry. And after that, I'm going to take these two Arteza paints. Uh, there are acrylic paints, uh, raw amber and burnt amber. First, I started with just the plain uh, paint, but I realized it was too thick. So I added a little bit of water and I started wipe wiping it off. So it looks like a stain and I really, really like how it turned out. I love the color. I like the effect um, that these two colors give. And I really, really think it turned out beautiful. After I was done painting the front, back and the sides of it and it, when it was dried, I took this gray uh, acrylic paint by Arteza, I watered it down and I went over um, my boards because I wanted it just a tiny little bit um, a little weathered. I really didn't like um, it to be completely brown. I'm doing exactly the same thing with these mini sticks. They're actually going to represent the... Uh, roof. You will see it later. I'm going to leave all this to dry and after that I'm starting to assemble my roof. I used only my hot glue gun and that was just enough. After all this was assembled I went to my Cricut and I printed out First, I printed out nativity scene that's going to go on a top block. And then I printed out Christmas that's going to go on a middle block and then begin with Christ. And that goes on a bottom. I peeled off the uh, transfer tape and then next I'm taking two little pieces of cardboard. I'm gluing them together and then I'm taking the star that I actually uh, printed out on my Cricut and I'm going to put it on top of this uh, cardboard piece. And next I'm going to cut it out. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because that's going to go on the top of the roof. And uh, it needed some support. So I thought uh, putting it on a cardboard would make it perfect. And I was right. And now I'm just hot gluing this on top of this uh, roof. And the bottom of the star goes on the top of this top block. You see what I'm doing over here. Next I'm taking Mod Podge. I wanted to make sure all this is sealed nicely but I wanted to add one more thing. If you know me, if you know my channel, you know I don't use glitter. I use it there rarely and for this project I thought it really needed something for the top for the star and the top part where uh, the nativity scene is and I used a light uh, it was a white glitter with just a little bit of shiny and also I used the silver one as well and that represents uh, like a stars on a um, night it just I think it looks beautiful and over here it kind of looks like it was green probably the way the light was shining but the picture doesn't do it justice I absolutely love 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 this project I think it turned out beautiful. I wouldn't change one thing about it. And I really hope you guys like it too. I know it's simple, but it means so much to me. And this is going to be in my home for a long, long time.
For this, I'm taking these large craft sticks that came from Walmart. I took seven of them and then I made sure to um, flip them over. I wanted the wrong side or actually the side that is not so pretty to be up. And then I aligned them and I took one more craft stick that I cut up to the size and I hot glue it on the top of all of these to keep them secure. That's going to be the only one for now. I'm going to add some more later. After that, I flipped it over and then I uh, took some pen lid that I had uh, in my house and then I created a circle with a pencil and then I took scissors and I cut it out. You can use exacto knife or anything else that you have on hand. I uh, used scissors and it worked out pretty well. These are easy to cut. After that, I'm gluing two more craft sticks on the back just to keep it secure. Now I sanded the edges and after that, we're going to go on to painting. If you want to create something like this with a real wood, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, this is just something I wanted to do and show you. You can do it with the craft sticks and still going to look beautiful. Now I'm using Beverly chalk paint in a color mineral and I am kind of heavily dry brushing over, going over with the wood grain. And next I'm taking a Beverly chalk paint in a color truffle to distress it. I especially wanted to distress the edges. I wanted to make sure um, those ends are very visible. And also I went over the whole uh, circle, distressing it. And then I didn't show, I just took a little bit of white paint and I distressed it um, just a tiny bit somewhere around. And now I'm taking these um, clock hands that I got from Walmart for 99 cents or 95 cents. And I'm going to take only the smallest one. And since this wood is very soft, I was able to use small scissors to create um, a hole. And that's uh, where I'm going to put my hand, clock hand. Um, and then I realized that this clock hand is just a tiny bit longer. So I snipped off the end. Uh, with my scissors and now it's perfect. Next I'm taking the stencil. I have no idea where it came from. Um, it has snowflakes on it and I decided that I'm going to use the simplest snowflake over here and I'm using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and I am just dabbing it with a sponge and um, I am not really good with stenciling things so I was very worried how it's going to turn out. But um, at the end, it turned out really, really nice. I'm super happy with uh, the way it turned out. Next, I am freehanding the word Merry Christmas on the top. This um, board is very forgiving. I was able to delete it many times. I was able to correct it as many times as I needed until I was satisfied. After I uh, was done with lettering, I started writing numbers. So this, as you can see, will be the um, advent calendar. So I started with number 13, which is a middle number on the bottom. And then I try to space it out as best as I could all the way around. And you see me doing it over here. And again, I had to um, erase a couple of times just to make sure everything is aligned nicely. After that, um, I wanted to use my paint marker in color white, but for some reason it didn't work out um, as well as I wanted to. So I tried to uh, use some paint, dip it in a paint and try it that way. It didn't work out. So at the end, I took a very fine brush and I started dipping it in a paint and just slowly going over and writing my numbers. Heidi Sombol is actually the one who um, does this often and I always admire it and I started doing it as well and it's actually very uh, calming and relaxing and I like doing it. It took a little bit of time I have to say but if you put on a show or just uh, relax put on some music you forget about what you're actually doing you're just enjoying it. So uh, you will see me over here in just a little bit. Not all the numbers are perfect and I'm totally okay with it. If you want them to be perfect, you can use your Cricut to cut out numbers or you can use um, Dollar Tree stickers or stencils, anything that you want. This is the way I want it. So now I am going over Merry Christmas words with this um, 
Sharpie, it is a silver color. And then uh, I shaded a little bit with the white paint as well. Next, I decided this needed just a little bit of something. So I took these two Waverly chalk paints, one in the color moss and the other one in color celery. And I created a mini kind of a wine on the top. And friends, I absolutely love how this turned out. I had a vision how I wanted to turn out and I think it turned out even better than this. I think down the road, I will probably make for next year another one with the real wood and it's gonna be way bigger. This year we're about to move. So all my tools or most of my tools are actually put away. So I showed you different way you can do it and it was less expensive. I think it turned out beautiful and we will definitely use it for this Christmas. sign that came from target dollar spot it was three dollars but i actually got it at their cheap you can see by a tag and i paid only 30 cents um, for it so first i'm taking the tag off and after i took it off i am taking off this little plastic hanger thing on top and next i'm taking this uh chalk paint uh, by waverly it is in a color moss i absolutely love this color um for Christmas and I am going to heavily distress it let's say it I uh, didn't want completely full coverage but um, I on some places especially in the middle it was um, covered almost completely when everything was dried I am taking this uh, Waverly chalk paint in a color truffle and I will uh, just go ahead and distress it around the edges and a little bit in the middle I wanted to make it look old and rustic when i was completely done with that part i am taking this peel and stick stencil that came actually from target dollar spot it was three dollars they had so many beautiful ones and i chose this one so uh, first thing i'm going to do i will take all these pieces out and i will uh kind of align uh the middle one so the mistletoe um i was guided by the lines on my um background on the wood uh, grain and i am going to actually take another piece of this um, peel and stick paper uh, to guide me as well and then i am going to start from the middle i'm gonna um, go um, then onwards with the words with the letters uh, that's the easiest way to make sure you um, stay uh, spaced out properly and just um, that everything turned out aligned that's actually the way i do it and i found it um, that is the best way after i was done with this word i'm gonna go and add um the for the next two words or actually next few words as well and this is how it turned out afterwards it was so easy to attach and um it stays on very well next um what i did i took these two uh color felts that i had on hand and I kind of cut out these shapes. Um, I wanted to create a mistletoe. Now, um, I don't have any kind of printable template for this. I just went ahead and kind of um, cut it the way I think it should look like. Um, I cut out four pieces in two different shades. And um, I am going to go ahead and put them together and i will first hot glue it in two spots just to keep it in place this felt is stiff felt so it was a little bit harder to maneuver but if you have a soft felt that will work perfectly and then i am taking um, this red checkered uh, ribbon and i am tying it on um, top of it this is the only red ribbon that I had and I actually it was wider so I cut it in uh, half lengthwise 
and um, it was kind of um, not peeling off but it was uh, shedding let's say and I can find <laughs> the real word for it you see me over here trying to cut out the pieces but at the end I was successful and it turned out really beautiful now after I was done with this I'm going to go ahead and um, get these mini um, snow uh, looking beads um, that are actually from the Dollar Tree. They represent snow and they're very small and I'm going to hot glue them, a few of them on my mistletoe. And then um, that's going to be it for this part. I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of frame, but you see I'm just hot gluing them on uh, my mistletoe. After I was completely done, I attached that on the top of my uh, sign and that's it for this project. This project was so easy to make, especially that that stencil was pre-made. I didn't have to use my cutting machine and it's perfect for anyone that don't have a cutting machine. Uh, I really, really like the added touch of a felt mistletoe. I think it uh, looks beautiful and it's fun. So I want to hear from you. What do you think? If this is your first time on my For this project, I'm going to be using three of these um, wood rounds that came from Arteza and also one of these beautiful snowflakes that came in a package of 10 from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to freehand uh, letters on these wood rounds. I am freehanding N, E, and L. You can use any font you want you can use stencils you can use your Cricut or cutting machine anything you want i decided to go ahead and freehand it after that i'm taking this uh, rust-oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and i am taking brush first i took a little bit thicker brush uh, i wasn't happy with it it wasn't easy to paint so i went with a very tiny fine brush and i'm filling out the letters it is, again, I mentioned this many times, it is very soothing to do and the more you do, the more you like it. So I encourage you to try. After all the letters were done, I am hot gluing E and L together and then I'm going to add the snowflake to represent O. Also, I'm making sure to glue it the way it's going to cover the hole that was on the wood rounds by the letter N. And now I'm taking the stand that I actually made a long time ago from the um, ruler, wooden ruler that came from Lowe's and some uh, Jenga blocks. But if you don't have that, you can certainly take just any kind of wood to be as your stand. And now I'm uh, distressing it with uh, white color chalk paint and also this mineral. I wanted it to be light and distressed. After all that was uh, dried, I'm going to take my sign that I previously created and I'm going to uh, put in these two holes a little pieces of uh, skewer, bamboo skewer, because I wanted them to be not so visible. And then I'm also going to cover them with two greenery picks. I'm going to hot glue them like this on two sides. If you don't have wood rounds, you can certainly use any type of wood you that you have or you can even uh, create it with just a simple wood and write everything down. There's so many possibilities. Now I'm putting these pearl uh, pearls that came from uh, Joanne's last year after the uh, clearance sale. And this is how this Noel sign turned out. Oh my gosh, I love this sign. And even though there is a little bit glitter on this snowflake, I, snowflake, I think it's absolutely perfect. I, again, I think it was so easy to make and so inexpensive, but it looks high end, I think. What do you think? I uh, picked up this ornament from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to uh, go ahead and take off 
those uh, buttons and um, those details to make sure this ornament lays flat. And then I'm going to flip it over and use the other side. Now I'm using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and I am giving it um, pretty good coverage. I left it a little bit around the edges and after everything was dried I actually took a sandpaper and sanded a little bit around the edges just to make it look a little bit distressed, not too much. Next, I'm taking these uh, Rabon transfer uh, letters from the Dollar Tree as well. And um, I cut them out. And as you can see over here, uh, I marked also where I want to put them. And, and now I am just gently putting them down, making sure um, they're aligned as much as possible before I uh, press them on. I'm using some old gift card uh, to press them on and then I started peeling them off. It worked like a charm and I absolutely love how it looks like. So after I was done with um, all my uh, words, I took my pencil and I started uh, freehanding the words uh, one beside each uh, word. And then I'm taking this golden marker and uh, tracing over these words. Then I'm taking the star, uh, scrapbooking star, and I'm uh, gluing it on the top of the ornament. After that, I'm taking uh, this ribbon that I I'm, don't remember where I got it last year, but it is a sheer ribbon, and I am uh, piping it through the hole on the top and just tying a knot on the top. After that, I realized it is just a little bit plain, so I decided to uh, use the same marker and kind of just write a curved a line on the bottom, as you see me doing it over here. To be honest, I actually consulted my husband. I said it looked a little bit plain, and he uh, told me, why don't I do that? And I actually like the way it looks. Now, I didn't want to leave it uh, this bright, so I went ahead and got my chippy brush and my white paint, and I uh, went over um, those lines to just make it softer and this is how this turned out I absolutely love the saying on a, um, this ornament you know how much I love to include the real reason for uh, this uh, Christmas season in my projects and I just think it turned out so so beautiful please tell me in the comments what do you think First, I took this dowel, it is, it is a square dowel uh, from Home Depot, I believe, and it was only 98 cents. And I took these letters from, um, wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to put them in a row like this, and I'm gonna measure uh, to make sure they are spaced out just enough uh, that piece of this dowel fits between them. Then I'm gonna measure out the height and mark it with a pencil. And I'm gonna cut out with my miter saw two of these. So I'm actually creating a ladder and you will see um, later uh, that. Now I am also going to take the leftover of this dowel and I'm going to mark off how much I need for the little pieces that go in between. Um, two long pieces. So I'm going to cut out four of these pieces. After I cut them out, I'm going to take a little bit of um, sandpaper and just sand out the edges just a little bit. Now um, it is time to glue it. So I actually marked it where um, with a pencil where I want them to be glued just to make sure they, they are in a place where I want them to be because I want these um, letters to be snug in there. You will see later. I'm using uh, wood, uh, Gorilla Wood Glue and I am gluing them in place. After all four were glued in place, I left it to dry really good. Now it is time, um, while that's drying, it is time to paint my lettuce. So I took this uh, red paint 
acrylic paint that I had on hand and I am giving one coat to these letters on both sides. While they are drying, uh, I am gonna go ahead and take my Waverly chalk paint in a silver lining color and I will um, paint the letter with this uh, chalk paint. I wanted a good coverage on it. I didn't want it, um, any real wood to show through because I really like that contrast between the red and this uh, gray color. When everything was completely dried, I uh, it was time to assemble it. So I took the wood glue in combination with the hot glue and I started gluing the letters. Now putting the letters in with the glue, it was a little bit challenging. So when I pushed it, in between uh, those two uh, pieces of uh, letter, actually some wood, uh, some uh, glue came out, so I had to use a toothpick to pull it out. By the time I came to the Y, I realized I should flip it over and push it from the backside. So if any glue uh, comes out, it will be on the backside, it wouldn't be visible, but we all make mistakes. And uh, next time, if I make something similar, I'll know. It wasn't that bad, I was able to clean everything out and touch up with the paint. Now I'm taking just a little piece of greenery that I had and putting it on a top. And then on the opposite corner, I'm putting this uh, kind of a berry wine that I had also in my stash. It came from Joanne's last year, wrapping it around and hot gluing the ends. And that is pretty much it for this um, second DIY. I really, really think this one is super cute. I like how it turned out. Um, it makes me smile. I don't know why. When I look at it, I think it's very adorable and um, it looks really, really cute. I think on tear tray, on any shelf, I, I would say. And the best part is you can really customize it, put any letters you want or any size you want. I took this frame from the Dollar Tree and it's kind of a shadow box looking frame. So I am going to uh, pull it apart. I will take away the backing because we're not gonna need it. Next, I am going to take these uh, stir sticks, paint sticks that came from Lowe's and I am going to measure how much I need to cut out. So I took four of them and then I actually uh, marked it and I cut them out uh, with my miter saw. After I cut them out, I'm gonna take my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a linen white color and I will um, heavily distress it, let's say. I didn't um, care about giving it full coverage. I just wanted to make sure in the middle there is um, enough paint so I can um, it can be visible. Next, I'm taking this red acrylic paint and I'm going to paint paint the frame. I gave a few pretty good coats on this and even then it looked distressed, which is good with me. Um, it looked like old wood. And then after everything was dry, it was time to assemble the sticks. I used my hot glue to uh, put them in place. I made sure they are all spaced out nicely. And I only put the hot glue on the sides where they meet with the uh, frame. When they were all glued in place, I'm taking these um, stickers that came from the Dollar Tree as well and conveniently they were in a red color and I am spelling out Merry Christmas on the two bottom um, paint sticks like I'm showing you over here. They're uh, pretty good to stick on, but if you would recreate this and you want to make sure they stick pretty good, you can add some Mod Podge on top. Now I'm taking this Christmas tree um, and I am making sure the back is flat because it is a little bit bigger than the frame and that way you will actually uh, fit nicely. After that, I'm taking these two square beads that came from the Dollar Tree as well and then I, am, I painted them uh, with mineral uh, chalk paint by Waverly and then I actually put a little piece of um, skewer inside of the hole so it's not a visible 
and then I'm taking this red piece of um, burlap ribbon that I actually just pulled apart to create kind of a bow on this mini um, present. It was a little bit challenging, it took a little bit of hot glue and time, but I managed to do it. I made two of them and I put them on the bottom next to the Christmas tree. They look so, so cute. My kids loved it when they saw um, I made them. Next, I decided to take this uh, garland, wine garland that came from the Dollar Tree in a white color and I put them on top. Uh, it kind of represented Christmas lights. I really like how it turned out. This was actually my uh, son's idea. He said it miss it's missing Christmas lights, so that's what I did. I really think this turned out super, super cute. I think it looks high-end, and I don't think anyone would say that it came from the um, supplies from the Dollar Tree and paint sticks. I would like to hear from you. What do you think and did you like this project? I'm going to be using um, this wood panel and also two acrylic paints that came from Arteza as well. One is um, brown and the other one is gray. I watered down the uh, brown paint to create kind of a stain effect and I painted just a frame. So all over the frame, inside as well and from the out edge of the frame. I didn't leave this to dry completely. Uh, when I decided to go over with the gray one because I wanted to create that uh, weathered effect. So I went over two times and maybe a few times a little bit on some places where I thought it needed a little um, more gray color. Then I left this to dry and after that I'm using this white acrylic paint from Arteza and I am painting the inside of it. I did not use any tape again because my projects are mostly rustic. I am careful, but if there is any kind of mistake, it is totally okay. I left this to dry completely and then I went ahead and painted uh, or actually dry brushed that white um, acrylic paint on top of my frame because I wanted it even further distressed and more um, weathered looking and rustic. Now I'm going to start painting. First, I'm going to show you these markers. I already um, shake them up and I uh, pumped it a couple of times so the paint comes through. That's all you need to do. And this is how they work. They are real paint and it is so, so easy to work with them. I absolutely love them. I knew I'm going to love them, but when I started using them, I fell in love with them. So over here, you see me um, creating this kind of a mountain looking um, scenery you will see later what it, that's gonna be i actually saw this picture in one of the stores i don't remember where and it just stuck in my head so i was hoping i will be able to uh, recreate it so i'm going over as you can see uh, with different colors so darker gray and that lighter gray um, and then i'm gonna go ahead and get some um, white color as well and you just go back and forth and same like you're painting and you don't have to be a great painter to create picture like this trust me just try and you will be surprised you see me over here creating uh, pine trees and also i don't know if they really look like this but i just went ahead and painted uh, kind of a lines and added different textures different colors and I think at the end they turned out great, but like I said, it seemed like using a paint and brush, just go uh, back and forth and add some colors that you think they might work. So now you see me adding a white on top of it, and then um, that's going to kind of make the subtle effect and make them look like they're far away in a fog. You will see me over here in just a second using a paper towel to just smudge it a little bit because like I said, it is not a real marker, it is a paint marker, so you can really treat it as a paint and make it uh, your own.
And now uh, you will see me using my pencil and I will freehand the words, go tell it on the mountain. And um, after I freehanded with my pencil, I went ahead and I grabbed a dark gray marker and I will exchange the tips. So I wanted uh, the tip to be finer, uh, not that thick. And I shouldn't be doing this above my project, but you learn. Hopefully, I, I was glad I, nothing bad happened. So it was so easy. You saw me. I just pulled it out, twisted it, and pu push it back in. And now I'm tracing my uh, words with this marker. And after that, this project will be complete. I think this is definitely one of my favorite projects I made to date. I love, love how it turned out. I love the colors on it. But most of all, I love the message behind it. And uh, you know, I wanted this season uh, especially to include the real reason for the season in my projects and I really hope you guys like it and you will give it a try. I purchased two packages of uh, large paint sticks. I bought them at Lowe's. They were 98 cents a piece and there was three in a package. I opened them up. I laid one uh, flat down to be the base of my tree. And then I cut each uh, lengthwise. And good thing there is a roller, so it is easy to figure out where you want to cut it. I cut the bottom one to 14 inches and the next on top to 12 inches and then the next one to 10 next one to 8 and the last one to 6 inches also uh, the base stick um, has a ruler on it so it is easy to make sure you have the same space between uh, the boards also i cut a little piece the leftover to put it on a bottom later as a base if you don't want to use painting sticks you can definitely use a large popsicle sticks and make it um, smaller now you can glue this together or you can do what i did i use decorative nails to attach them to each other i also used a little bit of glue just to make sure they are kept in place because i realized they're moving even with the nail Next, I will be using mini clothespins that I bought at Hobby Lobby for um, very inexpensive using my 40% off coupon. And I'm gonna lay them, um, spacing them out evenly using the ruler that is on the board. And you can see over here on the bottom, there are seven of them and going on uh, towards the top, there's six, five, four, two, and then on top there is one. I'm using these Dollar Tree uh, craft stickers to decorate the top of my advent calendar. I'm using this um, a glittery star. Now, this is totally customizable. You can definitely paint um, this tree if you want. Um, I really uh, like the way the ruler looked like and it helped me while I was building to everything be even. Next, I am using uh, this craft paper that I got from Hobby Lobby for uh, four for a dollar, which is 25 cents a piece. And this jar lid, and I am cutting out the circle shapes, 25 of them.
On the back of each circle, I'm gonna write whatever I want. Um, as you see, family movie nights, bake cookies, deliver cookies to your neighbors, um, pick a breakfast, pick a candy out of jar or anything that you can think of that you want your kid to do that day. Then I'm gonna attach all of them to the board and also using my uh, pen or you can use a Sharpie on a mini clips, I'm gonna write numbers, one through 25 going from bottom to top. And that's all that is to it. It turned out so cute. I am very, very excited to see how my kids are gonna react. Now I mentioned you can turn this into a countdown to Christmas. You can just pick one circle or any other shape you'd like and you can move it each day to put it on a different number as a countdown to 25. I really hope you will give this a try. It is very easy to make and it is very customizable. You can add your own touch to it. I'm taking this cardboard from, you can see from cereal box that I had, and I'm um, creating a cone shape. Now, if you have already cone shape, or styrofoam co cone shape from the Dollar Tree or from anywhere else, you can certainly do that. This is how I created mine. It is very simple to do. You can just roll it until you're happy with the size. And then I hot glued um, both ends, and then I cut off uh, the axis on the bottom deciding what size I want, what height I want of my Christmas tree. Then I'm taking um, this bag of mini pine cones that I actually got last year after the Christmas sale at Hobby Lobby for 49 cents. That's the best time to buy anything after the uh, clear, uh, sale, after the holiday sale. And I am going to start hot gluing them all the way around this cone. I started on the bottom with a little bit bigger pine cones and then I started going up all the way up until I was completely done. Now this did burn my fingers. I foolishly didn't take protector. So if you're doing this, make sure to use um, some kind of protector uh, from the hot glue gun. When I put all of them I put the last one on top and then I went around and uh, looked if there is anywhere between the pine cones that there is a space and I added uh, one extra, one small one, just to fill up the space and um, so I cannot see the uh, cardboard underneath. And that's it for this project. Again, I left it the way it is because I loved it, but if you want to add a snow effect or any embellishment, you can certainly do that. But I think both of these pine cone uh, trees are so beautiful. I love natural de decor and I love how easy it was to create and it is beautiful. I really think it's beautiful. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear from you. What do you think about all of these projects? Do you like them? Which one was your favorite? Tell me in the comments down below and would you recreate any of these for this upcoming Christmas season? Give this video a big thumbs up. It means so much to me and it help, helps my channel get promoted by YouTube. If you're new, subscribe. I would love to have you share this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.